Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Stinger VIP laser jamming system and specifically the size of the laser jammer heads that it comes with. Um, now, the way that it works is with the VIP, you have separate transmitters and receivers. And both the transmitter and receiver, uh, they're gonna be shaped and designed like this. Uh, it's kind of this long box like this, and it's uh, kind of square here on this face. Then you got a cable and it plugs into uh, the box, right? Now, the transmitter, you can also optionally upgrade it to a little fiber head. And basically the fiber head looks like this. So rather than having a box like this, you have just a little bitty fiber like that. Um, again, this is for the transmitting side, not the receiving side. But if you want, and you want maybe like a stealthier install and a smaller head, uh, this is gonna be a really cool option here. Now let's take a look at how the sizes compare with you know, the ALP. So right here you can see we've got three different systems. Uh, we've got the standard Stinger VIP head, both transmitter and receiver is available on the side. Again, you can upgrade the transmitter to this little bitty fiber head like this. And finally, here's a look at the anti-laser priority, the ALP. Uh, as you can see, it's a much wider system, right? So the ALP is gonna be wider versus the Stinger is gonna be longer. Uh, this does have some impl implications in terms of installation, pros and cons, all that kind of stuff. And I go over some of those details uh, on my website. And actually, there's gonna be a really, really good uh, discussion on RDF I'll link you to with people discussing kind of the pros and cons and benefits of all this kind of stuff. But as you can see, size-wise, the ALP is definitely going to be a wider head, and the Stinger heads are definitely going to be less wide, but uh, a lot longer. And then you've got the really tiny fiber heads, right? Now, as I mentioned with the Stinger heads, normally you don't get the fiber. Uh, this is what the receiver looks like, and this is what the transmitter looks like. Uh, they come in kind of the same box, and they both have this kind of square-shaped uh, face, right? Now, looking at it from this end, which is gonna be really important, you know, that's what you'll see looking at your car, Here's how the sizes compare between the two different size heads. Uh, this right here is gonna be the Stinger VIP head. Uh, it's about 16 millimeters square, like this. And uh, the ALP, it's gonna be kind of a wider rounded shape, right? It's about 14 millimeters uh, tall from top to bottom, and then about 57 millimeters across from left to right. So 57 as opposed to 16, right? So a lot wider this way, but pretty similar this way. 14 millimeters versus 16 millimeters. Now, if we want to um, add in the fiber optic cable, take a look at this. Fiber optic cable is only about 2.6 millimeters. It's really, really tiny. So as you can see, and we'll take a look at how these look on the car in just a second, but you can take a look. Just looking at the sizes of the heads, we've got a pretty big difference, right? So here's a look at uh, my ALP head. Here's a look at uh, one of the Stinger heads. And here's a look at the little fiber optic head. So awesome. Now, I mentioned uh, this guy is only about 16 millimeters tall, where this guy is about 14 millimeters tall, which means this guy is just barely just a hair taller not a lot but a little bit um, so you can see just kind of putting them side by side in, in this orientation this guy's just a little bit taller but not a whole heck of a lot so it's going to be pretty comparable in size this way it's just a two millimeter difference uh, again if we want to add in the fiber optic cable it looks like this so you can see this guy, uh, super, super tiny. We can just fit him right into the little crevice here. And that's kind of one of the cool things about uh, these fiber heads is it's really easy to tuck them into different nooks and crannies and hide them. And you got a lot of cool installation options. So cool. Now we can go ahead and take a look at uh, how these look on my car. Um, if you'll notice right here, this is one of my uh, ALP heads on the front of my car in my grill. I actually had a professional cut a hole, kind of dremel a hole in my grill. He had to remove the bumper, take it off, and cut a hole to get the head installed. You can see that there's the bracket right there on the outside, and here's the head itself. Now, one thing that I was kind of surprised when I started playing with it is uh, I can actually fit the stinger head into my grill without having to cut my grill, which is awesome. I was not expecting that at all. And that's kind of one of the cool things about the smaller heads is if you're concerned about having to cut your grill, these smaller heads are really, really nice, you know? So here's a, a look at uh, the ALP head. Um, here's a look at the stinger head. Uh, now, granted, I did have to mount it down here lower. I wasn't mounting it in the exact same spot. If I wanted it up here, I'd have to cut my grill anyways, you know? But nonetheless, you can see that uh, having a smaller head means we've got more options as far as placement. And if we want to avoid cutting, you know, we've got some options there. Uh, Next, I was playing around a little bit more, and uh, I also installed the fiber optic head in my car. Uh, I do have it installed here in this picture, and uh, see if you can uh, see if you can find it. Kind of like where's Waldo? I'll give you a second. Pretty tiny, isn't it? Find it. It's right here. See that? There's a little bitty fiber optic head. I just kind of found this little crack right here and sort of shoved it in there just for the picture. So 
as you can see, super, super tiny. There's the ALP heads, there's the stinger heads, and here's the little fiber heads. Now, as far as placement, this isn't necessarily, you know, the quote unquote best place to install them. I was just kind of see where I can put them and just see what they look like, you know? So I messaged uh, Cliff about placement. As you can take a look here, you know, here's my car kind of zooming out. You can see I've got one of the heads here, uh, the other head here, and then the fiber heads. I've got one there, I've got one down here. Super, super teeny tiny, I know, which is awesome. And then I've got the ALP heads, which are also pretty small as well, so really nice. Uh, anyways, I messaged Cliff about placement because I didn't really think my placement was right, you know, I didn't really know how it works with Stinger with these separate transmitters and receivers. So what he'd suggested looks like this. So what we've got is um, the red is going to be our receivers. It looks like this. So here's one receiver in this corner. There's another receiver in this corner. Here's another receiver in this corner. Transmitters, if we use the fiber optic cables, uh, we've got one right here next to it. Another one, kind of cool, you can put it right here by the headlight. Uh, another one you can put over here by this headlight, so really cool. That's, again, kind of what I mean about having more uh, options as far as installation. How easy it is to install here in the little corner and how well it'll stay there once you put it, I don't know, but just in terms of placement and options, you can see that's pretty slick. Um, this green one here, this is going to be the uh, the Stinger VIP radar antenna. Uh, this is where I had it installed last time, right underneath my uh, license plate here. But anyways, focusing on the laser jammers, you can see they're super tiny. Uh, if I was to install it here, I would have to cut my grill just like I did for the ALPs, but the fact that they're smaller means that it's going to be a smaller hole. So it's not like I'm able to escape altogether grill cutting, you know, but it's nice that I do have some more options. So here's an example of uh, where I could install them here on my car. Now, another cool thing about the installation I like is the way the cables are actually run once you get it installed. Uh, with the ALPs, the way it works is each head actually is wired into the main control box, which I have installed uh, kind of underneath my dash. So I have to run both cables for both heads through my car's firewall into that box. If I had a third head, I'd be running three cables, right? Now, uh, with the Stinger, the way it works is everything actually plugs into this laser analyzer box. Uh, if you open it up, the cover pops off, and you can see we've got a number of different ports here for all the different heads to plug into. We take a closer look at it, you can see uh, the receivers. We can plug in up to four receivers on the front of the car and up to four transmitters on the front of the car, so actually up to eight heads total. Again, there's more heads individually because our transmitters and receivers are separate. So we've got that there. So you've got all the cables that are plugged into here. You may have, you know, a big collection of cables, you know, everything sitting here uh, next to the laser analyzer box. But once it comes time to actually install it in your car, we have one USB cable like this, which we would then run into our car. And rather than having a bunch of separate heads, we have just one head or one cable that we're going to be running through our car's firewall and into our cabin, which is pretty nice. I like that feature a lot. And when it comes to maybe uninstallation, we only have one cable to worry about rather than like a whole bunch of them. And I know Jadong pointed this out. It's just a USB type B to type B cable. So uh, if you wanted to, once it comes time to maybe trade in your car or sell it or whatever, you could even leave that cable in there and then just buy another one for a couple bucks. Uh, it's just a super cheap standard USB cable, you know? So anyways, a bunch of cool stuff regarding the size. It was kind of one of those things that when I started playing around with it, I realized, um, wow, we got a lot more cool options as far as placement. Uh, you know, the fibers, yeah, they're really tiny, but uh, I was kind of expecting the fibers to be tiny. But the fact that uh, even the standard heads, I could get those into my grill without cutting two, that's kind of cool. Um, the fibers, uh, they are an added cost. Uh, it's another, you know, 600 bucks over the standard transmitters. Otherwise, you have a, your transmitter is going to be this sort of shape. Right, so it is an added cost for the fiber, but it's kind of a cool thing. And even if you don't want to necessarily spend that money and you're uh, wanting to go for just this size one and this would work with your car, that's another cool option as well. Now, um, I mentioned earlier that uh, there's a great discussion in RDF. I'm going to link you to that in the video description. Uh, you'll find the links underneath the links to where you can actually buy the two different systems. And uh, in that link, you'll find some awesome discussion uh, about you know the pros and cons of the sizes, installation, uh, discussion of performance and sensitivity because the size is really just one piece of the puzzle. There's so much more to discuss in terms of sensitivity, performance, uh, price, installation, all this kind of stuff. There's a lot to it. You know, In this video, we're talking about just price. So I would definitely recommend taking a look at that discussion and there's a lot of really great stuff in there. So anyways, just wanted to show you a quick take on uh, the size differences between the ALP and the Stinger heads, how they compare, and uh, cool. I've never had a chance to see them, you know, laser and or for both systems in person at the same time, so I just kind of wanted to shoot some pictures and uh, share this with you guys. So hope this has been helpful. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.